everyone. Thank you for watching the video. Just wanted to give a quick, neat recap and just uh, some of the things that I've noticed in my training leading up to this competition to share with you guys uh, in this most recent performance in my meet, which was on December 10th, uh, the USPA Brentwood Bash in Brentwood, Tennessee. Um, it's been a while since I've actually posted on the channel. However, I wanted to kind of give some insight on some of the things that I've been doing leading up to this competition um, and actually why geared lifting has been a benefactor to helping me with my raw deadlift. Uh, so with this particular competition, I did not have a real successful meat prep. I was sick three out of the past five weeks prior. Uh, so training was very inconsistent. There was times where I didn't even train at all. There was one week where I didn't train, period. Uh, so very a, a lot of ebbs and flows in my uh, training. However, one of the things that really stood out as far as with my training uh, is I've always done uh, singles with a deadlift suit. I've been doing that for actually the past four months now. So I've been doing it for a while. You know, and the reason why I got into that was because I heard there was a benefit if you do gear lifting to help with your raw lifts. So I wanted to go this route and kind of see how that would factor with my body. And uh, I was initially doing this particular competition because an individual that is my friend uh, was going to be doing his very first meet that I was going to help him out. So I was like, you know what? I might as well compete myself. Obviously, just, you know, do deadlift, which is what I do anyway. Um, so I decided to open up with 650 to play conservative. Really went well. Uh, jumped up 50 pounds, went to 700. Again, smooth. Decided to kind of push it a little bit uh, and took 750. But... I'm completely ecstatic with how that move, how that 750 moved because I truly believe I'm capable of more. Um, but obviously, it's exciting to to know that and definitely gives me uh, things to, to keep in mind for going into next year. And the things that stood out to me were one, like I mentioned, three out of the five weeks prior, I was sick and there was a whole week where I didn't train. Now, what salvaged my performance in this particular competition? Um, it has to be uh, me training in gear. And before I get into that, uh, one thing that I was able to do uh, in this particular competition was actually I was able to break the drug tested 198 deadlift only uh, record. Um, and now that I now in the USPA, I successfully have the uh, untested 181 deadlift record, the tested 181 deadlift record, and now I have the 198 tested uh, deadlift record as well. Uh, so uh, I'm super happy that I was able to uh, add this to my achievements in my piloting career. This actually would make uh, my 47th actual record that I had broken in competition. Um, so super static of that. But uh, what salvaged my performance? It has to be the gear lifting. And here's the reason why. Um, I was doing singles, right, uh, on, a, on a frequent basis, working north of 700 pounds. That is completely outside of what my training program actually consists of with my raw lifting. I work up to 700 pounds, and that's actually the highest weight that I will touch in training when I'm training raw. But I that's on a five-week increment, so linear periodization. I actually lift over north of 700 pounds, you know, uh, in my training, I would say three out of five weeks. So I will start with 656, go 20 pounds, 676, go 700, 722, and then maybe I'll take a top uh, to round it out, go for a nice single to prime the CNS. Now, here's the thing. When I'm working in those ranges, especially north of 700 pounds, my body is not getting fatigued or taxed because uh, the suit is allowing me to just push my CNS and not fatigue my joints, not fatigue my body. That's why you actually see a lot of people that compete in gear last a lot longer because it's not beating up their body. But their CNS is always primed because they're able to handle considerably more weight. That's why, in theory, people can lift more weight when they're using gear if they know how to use it correctly. So when I was doing that, I found that when, even in my training, when I would handle lighter loads raw, it would feel a lot easier, not only from a psychological aspect, but in my mind, uh, I felt confident, but 
the weight was moving completely fine because it's like, all right, well, I'm touching 700 plus pounds almost on a weekly basis with the suit. So doing my, you know, sub-maximum loads for volume feels like a cakewalk. And I have found that this actually has been super beneficial to my training and is what actually allowed me to pull 750 so easily in competition. Because I also noticed for me, whenever I wear the suit and I pull on my stiff bar, it feels like I'm pulling on a deadlift bar actually anyway, because the suit gives you so much pop out of the hole. Again, your technique has to be on point to get the most out of the suit at the bottom uh, so you can get that rebound. But it feels like pulling on a deadlift bar. So not only is my body just you know in sync when it comes to my timing and my pull on the deadlift bar, but my CNS is not being taxed at all because that's weight that I'm touching on a consistent basis. So I'm seeing a lot of positive from my research, which is obviously with my training and how it's been benefiting and carrying over to my raw lifts. And I think that there's a lot of misconceptions that raw lifters have when it comes to gear training uh, and not really understanding uh, where the benefits that actually come from it. You know, um, I will tell you, it's not easy. You have to be technically proficient. You, If you're not technically proficient as a raw lifter, you are going to have a hard time in gear. You need to master your raw list before you even get into gear to really just see how you can adjust and be able to get maximize what you get out of an actual suit. So that's first and foremost the most important thing. Obviously, is it on the expensive side? Yes, but I mean, what equipment in powerlifting is not expensive? My suggestion would be if you're a person that wants to get into it, talk to somebody you know or someone through somebody else that has gear. Gear, gear lifters, I guarantee you, a lot of them will have a lot of different gear just because of the different gear that they've tried throughout their career. So I would go that route. Start with, you know, buying one from somebody, maybe on Facebook Marketplace, for example, just so you're not putting a lot of money into the gear uh, first because you want to start with a, one that was that's loose so you can understand it, get used to how it feels, and then from there progress and get into a significantly tighter suit. And that's what, actually what I did. I started with a very loose suit and got the technique down, got adjusted, got used to how it feels, and then I went significantly tighter uh, and now I'm seeing the benefit from it. But like I said... I'm able to work up to heavy loads on a consistent basis without taxing my body, but priming my CNS. That is the sole reason why I was able to do 750 very easily in competition. And I'm really excited for what my lifts look like, both raw and equipped uh, next year. Um, and I'm definitely, uh, I have my eyes set on some certain goals. Now, another thing too is not only is it when I'm doing those heavy singles once a week with the suit and my belt, but when I'm actually doing my raw lifts, I'm actually doing it completely raw, meaning no suit and no belt as well. I am completely working my body to the fullest with heavy weight, raw, and then going to the complete other end of the spectrum, which is wearing a suit and wearing a belt. So I feel like, you know, I can lift the house that way. And the reason why I approached that training is because I felt like if I go polar opposite ends of the spectrum, then that means I'm going to be able to make progress, which would be in the middle, which is lifting without the suit, but with the belt on. So again, my raw volume work is no belt, no suit. My singles are with a belt, with a suit, but in the medium, in the middle, would be no soup with a belt. And again, my theory is proving to be actually true for me. And I'm super excited to keep training this way because now it's like, all right, I don't have to push my body so much raw with a belt because I'm getting that work, uh, taxing my body, you know, doing the volume. But then I can still lift heavier weight without, you know, really taxing my body with the suit, with the belt on as well. So I'm definitely seeing a lot of benefit from this. And I think a lot of people that compete raw would get very, very much at, uh, a lot out of it as, as well. So understand that there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I think that doing something of this magnitude will be super beneficial to anybody that does raw that would like to uh, improve their raw lifts. 
So with that being said, um, it makes me super excited for next year. I'm definitely going to be competing uh, equipped next year. Uh, as far as raw, I'm not sure yet. I really want to see where I could take this equipped uh, lifting because I think I could definitely get a lot out of it. Um, because one of the issues that I've had in my raw lifts is I've always been weaker out of the starting position of the deadlift. And with the suit, it's able to completely negate that. And But it doesn't mean that I'm going to, okay, now I'm just going to train in the suit all the time. No, I'm going to keep working my raw lifts because again that's what's harder and that's what's going to benefit me but uh i'm super excited um i haven't pulled actually on a deadlift bar yet with the suit uh but i've been always been notorious for training with the stiff bar and then not competing until with the day of with the deadlift bar and i'm pretty sure when i put the suit on it's going to have the same uh same adverse effect so i'm really excited to see what that looks like next year um yeah super excited uh, so if you have any questions, let me know. You're more than welcome to reach out to me. You're welcome, more than welcome to uh, leave a comment. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions anybody has. Um, but my next video, I'm going to actually talk about uh, what are some of the goals I have for next year. And uh, why 2023 is actually going to be a big deal for me uh, when it comes to powerlifting. And I will get into that. So thank you guys for watching the video. All the best and take care.